Hi Scorpio, welcome to your November 2024 horoscope. We start off the month on November 1st with a new moon in your sign. <laughs> this new moon is happening in your first house. So therefore, you might be feeling much more inspired and rejuvenated when it comes to your identity. You might feel more inclined to step out of your comfort zone, to let yourself shine. And you might also feel much more inspired to try out new hairstyle, a new way of dressing as well. But one caveat, before you feel the sense of inspiration and rejuvenation, you do need to dig deep and address any difficult feelings you might have around letting yourself shine and stand out from the crowd. You need to take a look at the skeletons in the closet. So all of that being said, if you want to dive deep into what this new moon can mean for you, I will leave this specific new moon horoscope that I did for all of the zodiac signs. Two days after, on November 3rd, we have a quite an intense day because we have four planets opposing each other in the sky. First, we have Jupiter and Venus opposing each other, and then we also have Mars and Pluto opposing each other. They are highlighting your second, third, eighth, and ninth house. And how this might manifest for you is this tension between wanting to be in partnership but wanting to stand on your own. This tension between, but I want to focus on communicating, making sure I'm understood versus no, what really matters is that I can remove myself from the situation and come back to my core and what it is that I want. <laughs> so overall, it might feel like there's a lot happening on November 3rd. And if that was not enough, the following day on November 4th, we also have Mars entering the sign of Leo and we have the sun trining Saturn. For you, Scorpio, Mars is entering your 10th house of career. So you might find much more rejuvenated and excited when it comes to your career and your, your workspace. You might feel uh, much more excited to jump out of bed in the morning. You might feel like you can take on much more challenging situations or projects at your work. And what I love about Mars entering Leo is that at the same time, you have this trine between the Saturn and, and the Sun. And Saturn in your fifth house, uh, you have been working very hard uh, to express yourself in a more meaningful way, express yourself in a way that's more aligned with who you are. And we see that reflecting positively on your identity. You're able to actually show up in a much more authentic way. And somehow this could also be translated into your workspace. You're able to shine uh, in a way that helps you with these challenging projects you're taking on. The planets do give us a bit of a rest for a couple of days until November 11th when Venus enters Capricorn. For you, Scorpio, this is your third house of communication and local environments. So this means that you could be bringing some beauty and harmony into your communication. You might be much more focused on speaking softly and lovingly. And it could also really mean that you are much more focused on cultivating meaningful, loving relationship with your neighbors and with your siblings. A couple of days later, on November 15th, we have a full moon in the sign of Taurus. This is honestly a jam-packed full moon. The moon will be conjunct Uranus. At the same time, we will also have Venus squaring the north and the south nodes. And Saturn is just about ready to go direct. For you, Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your seventh house of partnerships. On full moons, we see the consequences of our actions. We start to reap what we have sowed beforehand. So if there have been any actions that you have put 
into your relationships. Maybe you've been trying to be a better partner or communicate better. You might start around this full moon to see the results of that. Keep in mind that the moon is conjunct with Uranus. So these results might come unexpectedly and they might surprise you. One more thing I will add about this full moon though is that we do have the north and the south node involved. Um, so this sort of manifestation, this sort of reaping of what we have sowed should be something that is also aligning us further with our soul's evolution. Keep in mind that I am going to post a full moon horoscope in depth. We'll talk about all of the zodiac signs later when we get closer to the full moon. So if you want to make sure that you catch that one, then go ahead and press that subscribe button. A couple of days later, on November 19th, we have Pluto entering Aquarius. I promise this is the last time I will say that. I know for the last one and a half years, it's been a constant back and forth. Pluto and Aquarius, Pluto and Capricorn, on and on and on. <laughs> but from November 19th, Pluto is not going to enter Capricorn again, at least in our lifetimes. Pluto will be in Aquarius for the next 20 years, Scorpio, which for you is your fourth house of home and family. This means that for the next 20 years, you'll be focused on reaping a sense of meaning and purpose from your familial dynamics, familial relationships. And honestly, we could talk about this all day. But what I will do is I will link you to this live that I did a while back. It's one and a half hours long. We go through all of the zodiac signs. We talk about what all of them can expect for the next 20 years with Pluto and Aquarius. Closely after, on November 21st, we also have the sun entering a new sign, which is Sagittarius. And as it does that, it sextiles Pluto. The sextile highlights your second and fourth house. So we see that you're starting off this Pluto and Aquarius transit with a, some sort of financial focus, some sort of focus on your own self-confidence in yourself, your own ability to take care of yourself. It could be that something happens with your finances that starts to stir the boat with Pluto in your house of family. It could be that the sort of the inner workings of your self-confidence somehow start to trigger something within your family dynamics or your family relationships. And again, kickstarts these next 20 years of Pluto in your fourth house. And finally, we wrap up the month with a grand trine between Mars, the Sun, and the North Node. This grand trine is happening in the fire signs, actually. And what I gotta add a note here, the grand trine isn't exact on one day. It's actually, uh, first we have Mars in the North Node trine, then the Sun comes in and tries the North Node, and then finally the Sun trines Mars. However, there is that sort of flowing energy between the three, and in general, I would say for the span of those five days from November 22nd until November 27th, you might be feeling this general uh, fiery energy of energy of a flow and movement. For you specifically, Scorpio, this trine is happening in your second, sixth and tenth house. So you might especially find this flow of energy with your career, with your sense of purpose. It might also be literally uh, translated into you getting a flow of money as well. Uh, so a really nice way to wrap up the month. So overall, Scorpio, thanks for joining me for this November horoscope. I hope it gives you a bit of a sense of what you can expect. And honestly, for you, I would say there's quite a a lot of different focuses throughout the month, a little bit of focus on communication, family, and then of course, uh, with that full moon in Taurus, we have a strong uh, strong focus on your partnership as well. 
I hope you do subscribe so that you can come back for that full moon horoscope and be able to learn more about what you can expect on November 15th. Thanks again, Scorpio, and I hope to see you again soon.